bromocriptine, a drug used for both Parkinson disease and type 2 diabetes. So, bromocriptine is one of a drug which is having the multiple clinical uses. This drug can be used in the treatment of the Parkinson disease as well as this drug can also be used in the treatment of the type 2 diabetes. And apart from these two, the bromocriptine can also be given in other conditions like the acromegaly in which the growth hormone is excessively released and this drug can also be given in the one of the condition galactoria where there is increased prolactin release leading to the excessive milk secretion. And apart from these four clinical uses, bromocriptine can also be given in one of the condition like uh, neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Bromocriptine is used as an off-label for the treatment of the neuroleptic malignant syndrome. So this is a syndrome caused by the neuroleptics that is the antipsychotics which cause some motor disturbances which can be treated by bromocriptine. In this way bromocriptine is one of the drug which is having the multiple clinical uses. Now in this video let us see how it can act on these disorders and what are the possible side effects and what is the dose that can be used with the bromocriptine in all these situations. Bromocriptine is a semi-synthetic derivative. It is coming from the natural alkaloids that is the ergot alkaloids which are coming from the claviceps species like uh, claviceps purpurea and ergot contains many of these alkaloids like the ergotamine, ergometrin, ergocryptin and ergocrystine. Among these ergocryptin is used for the semisense of the bromocryptin. When this ergocryptin is going to be undergoing the bromination by using the n-bromosexinamide, ergocryptin can be converted into bromocryptin. In this way, bromocryptin is a semi-synthetic derivative coming from the ergot alkaloids. How it acts? Now let us see how this bromocryptin acts. Bromocryptin acts on the two pathways. One is the nigrostriatal pathway and second is the tuberoinfundibular pathway. By acting on the nigrostriatal pathway, it is going to improve the motor functions of the body. That's why it can be used in the treatment of the Parkinson disease. And by acting on the chobro infundibular pathway, it is going to decrease the prolactin release. That's why it can be used in the treatment of the galactoria. In this way, bromocryptin mainly acting on the nigrostatal pathway as well as chobro infundibular pathway. Now let us see how it acts at the molecular level. In the striatum, we can observe the expression of the D2 receptors on which the dopamine can act. These D2 receptors are the G protein coupled receptors linked with the different types of secondary messengers. One of the secondary messenger system they are associated is the adenyl cyclase system. And when these D2 receptors are occupied, they are going to inhibit the system, thereby they are going to inhibit the conversion of the adenyl cyclase into its active form. And normally this adenyl cyclase is responsible for the conversion of the ATP into cyclic AMP. As the D2 receptors are inhibitory on the system, adenyl cyclase is also inhibited. This results in the decreased levels of the protein kinase A. And D2 receptors are also coupled with the another system, phospholipase C system. And when these D2 receptors are occupied, the phospholipase C system is going to be activated. And when this phospholipase C is activated, it results in the release of the IP3. And IP3 can increase the intracellular calcium levels. Now, when the dopamine acts on the D2 receptors, protein kinase A is inhibited and calcium levels are increased within the cell. Both of these can result in the dopamine actions such as regulation of the motor functions and control of the prolactin release. In this way, dopamine can regulate both motor functions as well as the prolactin release by acting on the D2 receptors. Particularly, when the dopamine levels are deficient, the motor functions are disturbed leading to Parkinson disease and prolactin is excessively released leading to galactoria. In such situations, we can give the bromocryptin. Bromocryptin acts like a dopamine agonist and binds to the D2 receptors, thereby improves the dopamine activity such as controlling the motor functions and controlling the prolactin release. In this way, bromocryptin can be used in the treatment of Parkinson disease as well as the galactoria. And bromocryptin is also used in the acromegaly, which is a condition where there is an excessive growth hormone release. And dopamine 
normally increase the growth hormone release but when this bromocriptin is given it paradoxically decrease the growth hormone release by negative feedback mechanism so bromocriptin can also be given in the treatment of acromegaly where it suppresses the growth hormone release now let us see what is the possible role in the type 2 diabetes bromocriptin just as we have seen it is going to act on the d2 receptors thereby it increases the dopamine activity and apart from increase the dopamine activity it can also control the norepinephrine activity as well as the 5-HT activity so bromocriptin by increasing the dopaminergic transmission it can reset the hypothalamus so that uh, insulin resistance and glucose production triglycerides and fatty acid production can be controlled when this bromocriptin is given the type 2 diabetes it can decrease the insulin resistance and it decrease the hepatic glucose production decrease the triglycerides as well as the free fatty acid production by all of these the glucose levels can be controlled by use of the bromocriptin what are the side effects nausea and vomiting is one of the important side effect of the bromocriptin and because it is a dopamine agonist this side effect is observed with all the drugs which are having a dopamine action and other side effects like constipation lightheadedness dizziness syncope are observed as a common side effects uh, with the bromocriptin and bromocriptin can also produce orthostatic hypotension and it reduces the both systolic as well as the diastolic blood pressure in the patients bromocriptin can also produce few of the side effects which are uh, specifically related to its clinical use for example it can produce hypertension as well as cardiovascular problems which are observed particularly in the postpartum women as well as when this drug is given in the diabetic people the hypertension and cardiovascular problems may be observed and hallucinations are also observed particularly when this drug is used for the treatment of the parkinson disease and bromocriptin can also produce a pulmonary fibrosis and retroperitoneal fibrosis these two side effects are commonly observed with many of the alkaloids coming from the ergot so ergot alkaloids mainly produce respiratory side effects like the pulmonary fibrosis and retroperitoneal fibrosis so bromocriptin can also produce these two side effects how it is given bromocriptin is given in the form of bromocriptin mesylate it can be given as a tablet capsule or even as an injectable formulation what is the dose the dose of the bromocriptin depends on for which clinical condition it is going to be used for example in the parkinson disease the bromocriptin can be given as 1.25 mg twice daily and in the treatment of the hyperprolactinemia as well as acromegaly it can be again started with the 1.25 to 2.5 mg twice daily and in both of these uh, situations the dose can be increased gradually at an increment of 2.5 mg daily and in the case of parkinson disease the maximum dose that can be achieved is the 100 mg in the type 2 diabetes mellitus the dose initially started at the 0.8 mg once daily and it can be increased again at the 0.8 mg to the 1.6 mg so that the maximum dose that can be achieved is the 4.8 mg we can observe in the diabetes it is started at a at a low dose and in the neuroleptic malignant syndrome the drug can be given around 2.5 mg for every 8 to 12 hours to control the motor disturbances so in this way bromocriptin can be used for the multiple clinical uses and the dose for parkinson disease uh, is 1.25 mg and for hyperplactinemia it may be variable from 1.25 to the 2.5 mg but for diabetes it is started at the 0.8 mg and for neuroleptic malignant syndrome it is again started at the 2.5 mg so in this way bromocriptin acts on these four situations all the actions of the bromocriptin are related to the its agonist action on the d2 receptors and by binding to this d2 receptors it is going to control the motor functions so it can be used in the treatment of parkinson disease as well as the neuroleptic malignant syndrome and it also decreases the prolactin release so it can also be used in the treatment of the galactoria and paradoxically it can also decrease the growth hormone release thereby it can be used in the treatment of the acromegaly so bromocriptin is one of a drug with having the wide clinical uses but its main purpose is in the treatment of the parkinson disease